And everyone's like, uh, Tyler's cat just completely photobombed <laughs> the interview. So. And they have no shame with their butts either. It's no. like cat oh, no, no, she <laughs> put her butt right in front of the camera like, hey, look at this. It's like, no one wants to see that. Tyler Reddick back in the Freak Nation. Winner Tyler Reddick here in the Freak Nation. Tyler, I don't know if you can tell by my tan, but I was on oh. the beach for a freaking week, my friend. And Crash came out to me on the beach and said, well, it's a this, this Sunday. Well, Tyler and uh, uh, Tyler and Dylan, they're not doing so well in the race. I went, oh, crap. And then an hour and a half later, I said, Crash, guess who won? Tyler Reddick. And she, I did not believe you. No. Because when we came back out, it was, I don't know, somewhat after lunch. You were 19th. And it must have been after a pit cycle. But, of course, I'm not paying attention as much. I got my daughter to pay attention to. You know, I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll catch up on the race later. So I'm like, eh, I don't think they're doing very well. So whatever. Let's just continue. So when he said that, I'm like, <laughs> you are so lying to me. I'm, there's no way. And I'm like, holy cow, we had a party on the beach for you. Let's just put it that way. Awesome. Yeah, you know, uh, it can be the, the way the stages work on the road course. It can be a little bit deceiving if you tune in at the wrong time. And yeah, it was probably, I would guess, at the end of stage one, I think we were that far back. I think we were about 19th at the end of stage one, I'm guessing. Yeah, so with those cycles, you know, drivers would stay out and, and get some track position. And, and we we hit pit road, uh, you know, before, before pit road closed so that we could leapfrog back to the front at the, uh, you know, resumption of, of the race after, you know, the stage breaks. Awesome. Well, that being said, it's, it's out there that Randall, your crew chief, Randall Burnett, has said he's got to be your cheerleader at times to keep your spirits up when you when you don't when you're not doing well in the car. Was he was he cheerleading with you throughout this race at Road America? He had to do a little bit in the beginning because uh, we we felt like we were a little bit off um, in in certain areas of the track where I, I needed to be as good as you know as Kyle Larson, Chase Briscoe, and Chase Elliott were. Sorry about that noise. Hope it's not too bad. Um, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so we did, we worked on, a, well, we didn't really work on the car. The car was perfect all day. Honestly, I just had to move some things around some marks, uh, figured out some things on the track that, you know, the guys in front of me were using that I wasn't. And next thing you know, we kind of closed the gap and just through, you know, one spot at a time that, you know, I got around Kyle, I think in stage two, and then ultimately in stage three, you know, uh, could stay with chase until we hit pit road, then came off pit road right behind him. And, just kept pressing the issue and, and fortunately, fortunately uh, created a, a mistake. I saw your, I saw your cat just now. Yes. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, the, it's the, everyone's celebrating you right now. The, oh, here, here we go. Here see, we go. My cat used to do the same thing to me. Um, I think it was like a year or two ago I was doing a zoom and she mm -hmm. just walked like right in front of the screen like this for my hand <laughs> and just blocked the whole image. Everyone's like uh, Tyler's cat just completely photobombed <laughs> the interview, so. and they have no shame with their butts either. It's no. like cat oh, no, butts. No, she <laughs> put her butt right in front of the camera, like, "Hey, look at this!" It's like no one wants to see that. <laughs> <laughs> and here goes the conversation. Who were we talking with, Statman? I think it was Kyle Larson. He's a dog guy, and Statman's on Team Dog. Kenny and I are on Team Cat. Mm -hmm. Clearly, Tyler, you're Team Cat, right? Uh, I can't believe Kyle. I, I'm a little surprised Kyle said he was team dog because I know he's had a few cats throughout his life. So he might be trying to sweep that one under the rug. Mm. <laughs> it might have been. It might have been sweet. Oh, I think it oh. might have been Brad Sweet. Yeah, yeah it might have been Brad Sweet who was team dog and Statman. Statman, he just Statman, you just don't like cats. What's the problem, brother? I I'll tell all three of you. Cats are a waste of time. I can't <laughs> I can't deal with anything, anybody, anything that needs me to feed it and then ignores me. I, <laughs> no, I, that's not. You got to be a little nice to your cat, Sat man. Cause Thank you. Cats, because <laughs> I don't have that problem. I'm, I'm, I'm always having to, to ask for a little bit of space. Like, okay. Yeah. Like, I'm really glad you're excited to see me, but you've been like on top of me for about an hour. Like, can I like catch a breath? I don't have the problem with the cats that I have. They, it's actually the opposite. They're more like, attached i feel like they're worse than dogs they're, they're like dogs actually when i leave the house they'll just start howling for like an hour on end. <laughs> it's ridiculous. no that's not ridiculous it's adorable okay so then why aren't you like aj almendinger bringing your cats to the track i mean with how upset they get i mean i'm not kidding you it, it could 
they're worse. They're worse than Bo, I think. They'll it, it'll be six in the morning, and they're like sad, and they want a little attention. It's like we, we we fell asleep at like midnight. I was out there on the couch laying with you, and you can't go six hours without losing your mind. She'll come to the door and start howling and scratching at the door. I say, no, Bo's awake, and we're awake. And it's like, all right, well, we got to start our day now. The mm. cats are uh, are very uh, very attached. Yep, so Sam, man, you, you got you got a cat there that. You, you've dealt with a few cats, I guess, that, that just don't like people. <laughs> you got to be different, Statman. You got to yeah. caress them. The dog, I you know, I love a dog. A dog, you can pet him. But when a dog wants to go uh, lay down, leave me alone. And, uh, you know, and uh, I, I'm, I'm just a dog guy. I'm not going to be ashamed of that. And uh, I worked with these cat people for uh, 22 years, going up, starting at 23rd year. Mm -hmm. And uh, I still don't like cats. <laughs> 20, 23 years into the experiment, I still don't like cats. <laughs>
you know, always checked out in a lot of these road course races. He's won so many of them, but just as the race progressed and we, you know, went from being fourth to third to then second, then on his back bumper, I could kind of see where he was making, you know, just missing a little bit here, missing a little bit there. So I, I felt like, all right, if I can press the issue, kind of, you know, bait him into dr- driving into turn five really hard, making him think about a dive it in there, hmm. maybe a window would open up. And, and thankfully that's what happened. We both missed turn five. He just missed it a little bit worse than I did. And I was able to have the position into six. Oh, I was going to ask you about that. So you were watching those specific points where you could take advantage of him. Well, I think all the breaking zones you have at Road America, there's a lot of opportunities. You just got to know with each corner what the right strategy is. You know, Um, with turn five, it's like turn one um, all the way over to turn three. You know, if you get the inside line in the first corner, you're going to have the inside line for the next one. And turns one, uh, turn one to turn three is that way. Turn turn five to turn six is that way. Um, And actually just worked out perfectly because I I made the pass in five and six. Left him a little bit too much room in seven because we had a little bit of contact. Didn't want to shut the door. And I thought I hurt myself by a lot because of that. And um, thankfully, I made the right choice. Instead of trying to block into eight, just let him have the inside line because the carousel was the next corner. And it was a right-hand corner that was pretty much dominated right around the, the white line and the grass. So uh, thankfully, just it all played out really good there. General Tire delivers. I'm a full believer of momentum because I, th- I know there's a lot of people out there that don't believe that. They say every race weekend comes in and out on its own. But man, look what Kyle Larson did with momentum last year. I'm a full believer you guys could do the exact same. I mean, that's the hope. <laughs> what did you have, Stat Man? Did you have some? Well, yeah, kind of the same thing. But you win and. Uh, you, you crossed over that hurdle that kept you from winning, like on, on the dirt at Bristol and several other places. You win now, and does that? what does that do for you, for the team, for the guys that are over the wall? What does that do for them to say, all right, we got that off our back. Now let's go knock out about four or five more. Yeah, no, it, it certainly it validates everything that we've been all the work that we've been putting in, you know, that we've been going in the right direction. We've been making the right gains. Just it, it you know, it's reassuring to 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 know that we've not been as far away as as it seems. So for us, it's a huge, huge motivational booster. You know, it's really exciting for, for some of us on the team. It was our first win, including myself, my crew chief. So. You know, it just it's a nice sense of nice confidence booster validation that, uh, you know, we be- we belong here and we act, let's, let's go do it again. Did it make that next meeting with Richard Childress, your team owner? Did it make that next meeting with him saying, I told you, what are you worried about? <laughs> he's always been a believer, man. Um, he's believed in me since before day one. Honestly, he wanted me to come over to RCR when I was running a junior motorsports, believed that I would be a champion for him in the Xfinity series. And then we went out and did that. And he was like, all right, well, I guess we better throw you in a cup car now. And he <laughs> believes he's believed in me since day one, that, that we could go out and win cup races with, with this team. And um, it, it's just really nice to, to, to achieve that, not just for him, but for everybody at RCR that, that believes that as well. What did you think when he told you race morning at road America, what did you think when he said, I know you're going to win this race? I mean, he's always really confident in me. Um, <laughs> you know, he's told me that a few times this year. Oh, know? yeah. <laughs> and, he's, and, and the tough thing about it is the days that we've had that he's told me that we've we've been up front, we've been leading, we've been having things go right, and then, bam, they go wrong. So, you know, it, it, it's been tough on all of us. But, you know, he's, he's a believer in what our team has done, what I've continued to work on, the gains we've been making. And yeah, uh, it's always nice to have the boss when your boss has your back. All right, I know you got to get the hell out of here, man, but uh, whether it's Kevin Harvick with Bush Beer or even Dale Jr. back in the day with Budweiser, we know how they celebrated, but do you celebrate with a little bit of Delta 8 or a little – how do you celebrate with your sponsor, man? What do you do? Or 
you, you, uh, is in this spirit in spirit? I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm boxed in, you know. Yeah. So much. Yeah. Hey, we'll say things this. to change. Didn't you bring a beer into the post race press conference or something? Yeah, I, I I had a champagne bottle. I think it came from Victory Lane. It wasn't gone yet. I drank the other two, so I wanted I wanted to finish that one off. And someone <laughs> brought me a spotted cow. Then someone <laughs> handed me some some Captain and Coke, which was nice. I mean, I had I had every every corner I come around, someone was handing me something else. So. You know that was that was very nice for everybody. Oh, well I, done. Little Delta Eight gummies. I, I, listen, I I Kenny, know what you're asking for freebies. I, I, I know, know what you're hey, doing. <laughs> Tyler knows where I live. Damn it. Yeah, and I, I know some people. Yeah, I don't get drug tested every freaking week. I can certainly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Okay, uh, buddy. We are happy for you. Um, Crasher can finally and stack and finally. Pick somebody else or maybe they'll continue no. to pick Tyler Reddick. I'm riding the train, man. Freeze. We're riding the train. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank so, you guys so, so, but, so Tyler Reddick, as we say goodbye to you, who are your three ah. picks to win this weekend's cup race? Me, me, me. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> you know, I think the Chevys are strong. Um, they, they look pretty good on these speedways. Uh, we thought – you know, coming off of the first Talladega and, and Daytona race that the Fords were going to really dominate, but it seemed like the Chevys had it, had it going on um, when we were here in the spring. So I, I would not be surprised if the Chevys continue to show that speed, but I've obviously seen, we've all seen the Toyotas kind of come out of nowhere mm -hmm. and really pick up the performance. So guys like, you know, the, the ones that I wouldn't be surprised to see up front all day long would be, you know, Kurt Busch and, and Bubba Wallace working together. They both had, you know, really good cars on the speedways. Denny Hamlin's another one. You know, Kyle, Kyle and Christopher and Martin, they're all really, you know, all of their drivers are really good on the speedways. So wouldn't be surprised to see them up there, but it's going to be a tough race. It's going to be really hard to race more than than three, than two wide. Three wide is going to be sketchy with the heat and just how tight the track is. So there's a number of them, you know, the Hendrick cars were really good here last year too. So I think you really can't have a favorite. It's going to be hard to pick three because I think there's probably 15, 16 cars that, they have a good day can win this race on Sunday. Wow, Tyler's already into politics, but no. he can't give us three drivers. <laughs> I could, I mean, I'm riding with Bubba, Tyler. Mm -hmm. I'm riding with Bubba, William, Ford, Toyota, or no, Chevy, Toyota, and on the Ford, heck, I'll go with Blaney. How about that? Wow, you're doing a picture of yourself. Myself, so. All right. <laughs> Buddy, just go do it again, man. We, we won't get tired talking to you. Mm -mm. All right, sounds good, All guys. Right. Tyler Reddick here in the Freak Nation. And you're right, Stat, you, Crasher, you guys were riding that Tyler Reddick freaking train for a long freaking time. Statman started last year. I started this year with the new car. But, yeah, Stat was on it from la mid last year, I think. You said, this guy's going to do it. Hmm. Yeah, and it got embarrassing when he always, especially at Bristol. I mean, at Bristol, it was like he comes out of the last turn and gets spun out. I know. And, you know, I mean, that. That hurt, had hurt him. And every camera in NASCAR was aimed at him when at the end of the race, he couldn't get mad. But I think I'd be, I wouldn't want to be the fly on the wall because I'd get punched through the wall. <laughs> You'd get swatted? You'd get fly swatted? Just punch through it. IndyCar, WWT Raceway, Saturday, August 20th, the Bomberito Automotive Group 500. Icons, legends, and rising stars. Drama at 200 miles per hour. It's not a reality show. It's real life, real fast. The iconic teams, McLaren, Andretti, Foyt, Rahal, Penske, Ganassi. Legendary drivers, Johnson, Kanan, Castro Nevis, Newgarden, IndyCar. Only at WWT Raceway.